Welcome to part two of using the tools within the arrange view. Let's go ahead and get started. We left off at the arrow tool and so we will press number two on our keyboard and move on to the range tool. Now where the arrow tool allows us to select whole events and parts in the arrange view, the range tool enables us to select specific regions within those events and parts. So while the range tool is selected here, I can click, hold, and drag and then select this portion of these MIDI parts. And if I press delete, I can then delete those out. I'll control Z. I could also come back to the arrow tool and then click, hold, and drag these to another area of our song. Besides clicking and dragging to select, we could also select a specific range, hold down shift, and then come to other events within our song and select those as well. And as with a lot of the other tools uh, available to us, our quantize value, as well as what we have set here, whether it's quantize or adaptive, is going to influence the behavior when we're selecting our ranges. And we can also come to the edge of a selected range and resize that. Right now, I do have multiple ranges selected on different tracks and different uh, events and parts, but whether we have one selected or a group selected, it's adjusting it. Uh, its length is only going to affect one at a time here. So if I go ahead and click and move that in, and then you can see that this is even jumping uh, and being influenced by the snap to grid feature. Next in line, we have the split tool, and we essentially use the split tool to split our events and parts into smaller events or parts, or to just take sections that we need out of an event that we're working with. And if I press three, we then access the split tool. And once we make the split tool active, notice that we have crosshairs that appear and the horizontal, the horizontal line will sit beneath the track uh, that the cut will be made on and the vertical line denotes the exact position that the cut will be created once you click. So if I move vertically up and down within our song, we can see that that horizontal crosshair um, will sit below the track that is active for the cut. And then the vertical line here is going to show exactly where our cut will be at. And as I always say, you'll notice that this line is kind of jumping here and so it is influenced by our snap to grid if that's on. If I press in and turn it off, you can see that we have a more smooth uh, following of that line and can really come in and cut wherever we'd like. Now if we select multiple events here, notice that when we use the split tool, it will affect all of our selected events. So if I go ahead and make a cut here, then you can see this is going to be applied to all of these tracks or all of these three events in the separate tracks that I had selected. I'll control Z and put that back. Now, we also have another feature here within uh, Studio One that we don't necessarily need to access the split tool every time we want to make a split. So we can position our song cursor. Say I'll position it here. I can then press Alt X and create a cut on our selected events that way as well. Something else to uh, make mention of is that if you're someone who likes to use the split tool a lot, if you're working on a particular project that involves a lot of cuts that you're doing, um, we talked about this in part one, we can, if I press one, notice the underline and cycle through here and make sure that that's underneath the split tool. And then while our arrow tool is active, I can just press control on the keyboard and access the, the split tool like so. And it just gives us quick access. So whatever uh, tool that this underline is beneath, then that's going to be available to us when we're using the arrow tool simply by holding down control. If we're going to be working with MIDI uh, when we're using the slice tool, Notice there's a certain behavior here. If I bring up the split, split tool again and then make a cut at this area on this MIDI part, if you notice here, we have two long notes here on our, this is a cello part, and there's two long notes that are held basically over nearly two bars each. And if I cut here, the second part that's created, 
that note is going to be truncated. So I'll go ahead and make the cut. And then you can see here, now that note is gone. So if you don't want that to happen, then you'll want to hold down Alt. And then now when I make it through the cut, that note still remains. Next in line, we have the Erase tool. And we can access that by pressing 4. And most of us will probably just use the arrow tool to select and delete our events. So actually, I'll bring up the arrow tool, select, and then just press delete. That's probably the method that most of us are using uh, when we want to remove any audio events or MIDI parts from our song. I think maybe, you know, the eraser tool only has the, this one function of erasing events within the arrange view. But if you have a large group of events, I think it can work pretty quickly. So. If I press 4 and bring up the Erase tool and say I want to remove all of these, then I can just click, hold, and drag and get those out of there. And of course, while the Eraser tool is active, we can just click on Individual Events as well. Now we'll move on to the Paint tool, and we can access that by pressing 5. And if you note here, I actually have one of the different modes, the Line tool is active. And we can cycle through these tools by pressing 5 repeatedly. And then after we get to the Transform tool, if I press this again, we're now at the Standard Paint tool. Now, there's not much uh, that can be done with this within the Arrange view. It's really going to be particularly useful if you're working with automation and things like that. But uh, its basic couple of uses is that we can create empty audio and MIDI events within our song. And we can just click once to add uh, MIDI part here, a blank one. I can just click and add an empty audio event. We could also click, hold, and drag to create whatever size that we'd like. And I'll actually press 4 and bring up the erase tool and get rid of those. Another quick way that we can access the different modes of the paint tool is if I right click on an empty area here and come down to the paint tool, we can then choose from this menu here. Also, if I click the mouse wheel, then we can access the different modes here as, as well. The Mute tool, we can access, access that by pressing 6. So we can click once and mute these events and parts. And just click again to unmute. We can also click, hold, and drag to select a group of events to mute those all at once. We now have the Bend tool, and we can access that by pressing 7 on our keyboard. And the Bend tool is going to allow us to add and man manipulate bend markers. And I actually have a complete video that covers using the Bend tool. I'll put a little link up here in the right corner. So if you'd like to learn more detailed information about the Bend tool, because there's a lot that you can work with uh, when you have it accessed, um, you can just check out that link. But I'll briefly just show we can come in and my snap to grid is off, so that's not going to play a part in where I'm adding the markers to. I can put place them anywhere I'd like. And I'm going to go ahead and click and add a marker there, here, and here. And nothing's showing up, so it may seem like I'm a crazy person, but if we access the bend panel and then turn on this bend marker, then we can see the markers that I've added there. So if you're clicking and you're not seeing anything and you're wondering what's going on, that is one way that you can, or one area that you can check to be sure that that's on. If I bring up the arrow tool and then right click on this event, then we can see at the very top here, uh, this check mark, bend marker. If I deselect that, then um, that this is another way that we can access that hide show of our markers as well. So I'll go ahead and check that box again so that we can see our markers. And then if I were to just uh, play this back, and let me actually just solo this part here where we created our markers. And then, so we can hear what that's doing. If I come and zoom in a bit, I'll shift E to expand out vertically. Now, we can see that we can use the tool to add these markers, but while it's active, I'll press 7 to bring it back. 
If we'd like to manipulate these markers and stretch or compress our audio, we just want to be sure. Notice that the icon here is kind of a pencil with a, a vertical line to the right of it. You want to be sure that if you're going to manipulate the marker, you want to see that change. And then here, there's an icon that shows up to the right that's basically this uh, bend icon. And once we have that, we can then stretch this. And then as we stretch, the audio that's being stretched is going to turn red. The further we stretch, the deeper the tone of red is going to be. And audio that is being compressed is going to turn green. So then if I play this back, and let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, and then I'll control Z and return this back to as it was before. Okay, so that's a brief overview of uh, the bend tool there. And while that bend tool is active, we can actually click, double click and remove any markers that we've added like so. And we've reached the end here. The last tool is the listen tool and we can access that by pressing eight on our keyboard. Let me uh, zoom out a bit here. So with the listen tool, we can click and hold on any track to solo it and play back uh, at the point in which you click. And it doesn't matter if you're doing this with MIDI or audio, they're both going to work equally. So um, we've got that active. I'll go ahead and click here and on this instrument track. Another instrument track. And an audio track. A drum track here, a MIDI. So you can see that wherever we're clicking, it will start playback and it will solo that specific track for um, that we would like to work with. And then all of them together. Okay, so we've reached the end, and uh, thank you for watching. I hope that you have gained even more tools that will help you out. Uh, and if you haven't watched number one, there should have been a link. Maybe I'll put that here, or it was at the beginning of the video, and you can check that out as well. And I will see you in the next tutorial.